Welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining us during this opening session of the virtual trade mission to the west coast of the United States of America. My name is Ruben Dublar. I uh, work with Holland Circular Hotspot and over the past years we've been working together with the Dutch Consulate General in San Francisco and other public partners to see how we can really spark the collaboration between the Netherlands and the US in the field of circular economy. And I'm proud to say that during this session you'll get to see a cluster of companies that really brings together the front runners in the area of circular area development. All in their own field of expertise, uh, but I have to say if you bring them all together, of course they're able to really create this circular neighborhood. And of course we're, it's just great to work together with the west coast of the United States, such an inspiring and an innovative area. So we really believe that if we would team up with such a smart area and bring together the best practices of the Netherlands and combine it with the innovations and technologies of California, of the West Coast, then we can really create a neighborhood and a city that lives up to our climate goals and our circular economy goals. And also, of course, the Green New Deal that was set last year in Los Angeles. And of course, we're very glad that, uh, to see that we have the public leaders on this topic here in the opening session. The Lieutenant Governor of California and the Mayor of Phoenix. And above all, also the Dutch Minister for the Environment, Stientje van Veldhoven. Hi. Minister van Veldhoven, thank you for facilitating also this collaboration. I think very important. I'm also glad that you join us in this opening live session because you're an expert in circular economy and also very familiar with, let's say, California and the west coast of the US. So please feel free to jump in anytime you like Certainly or to join will. the discussion. Will, yes. So thank you very much for joining. And maybe before we move to our speakers in the US, um, maybe you can briefly touch upon why the circular urban development is so important for the Netherlands. Well, actually, circular economy, I'd say, is our secret weapon, but it needs to become a little less, less secret. It's now our best kept secret, perhaps, across the world, and we need, it, need to make it the best shared secret. And why is that so important? For two reasons. If you think about CO2 emissions related to production and consumption of goods, they amount up to 20% of our total CO2 emissions. So it's a very powerful weapon in achieving our, the, the goals of the Paris Agreement. And the second, of course, is the world population is growing to 10 billion people in 2050. Uh, and we do not have the three planets that we would need to, to, um, to cater for all of those people. So we need to become more efficient in the use of our resources. Um, so let's say a double agenda. Uh, and of course, there's lots of innovative companies. There's lots of create creativity. So it's also a wonderful agenda to work on. Yeah, a lot of goals. And I, you, we've seen the session that you had in December also with the Lieutenant Governor in, in California. You know each other very well. So we move over to our guests in, in, in the United States. So good morning to our guests, of course, in the United States. It's morning over there. Um, I would like to welcome Lieutenant Governor of California, uh, Elenia Kulanyalakis. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us. So uh, you and Minister van Veldhoven are both leaders on accelerating the transition to a circular economy. Um, but I guess there are still many steps to take, and you're both board leaders on this topic, but you know, we, we have to change the whole world. So how do we get everyone on board? Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Good morning, Ruben. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very, okay. very wonderful, clear. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you, Minister Veldhoven. It's wonderful to see you again. Likewise, I, likewise. I, I will say you are less and less of a secret all the time here in California <laughs> and your important work in the Netherlands. And it's great to be with you again to talk uh, circular economy together with all the experts that you've gathered together. California takes this very, very seriously. And we are the largest consumer market in the United States. So um, with our intention around the uh, targets that we are adopting uh, every day to increase uh, our uh, uh, use of recycled materials in our, uh, in our plastics products, in, in uh, really pushing 
uh, forward to ban single-use plastics. Um, at, at the moment, we've done it at the, in places like the uh, University of California system. We're working on a state mandate, um, but awareness is growing every day in the need to reduce our uh, reliance on single-use plastics and, and improve the recyclability of the products that we do use, uh, as well as, of course, reducing um, food waste, which is another very significant um, uh, contributor to greenhouse gas emissions for no good reason um, when we're filling our landfills with, uh, with organic waste. So all of these things are very much um, uh, on the table right now in the state of California. Um, it is an existential threat to us, climate change. Um, many of you may have seen in the midst of this global pandemic. Uh, we also last year experienced five of the six most catastrophic wildfires in our history. Uh, so again, it's great to be here. Great to be back at the table with you, Minister Van Hoven, and I uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you again, Lieutenant Governor, for, for joining us. Uh, what do you think, uh, Ms. Van Veldhove? Uh, um, I think that you see a lot of initiatives from California. There are a lot of initiatives in, in the Netherlands. What can we really do to accelerate the circular economy? Well, first of all, uh, Lieutenant Governor, it's a great pleasure to see you again. Uh, and I very much look forward to continuing the cooperation. If you look at how, how circular the world uh, is at this moment, we're only at not even 9%. So there is great opportunity because, of course, like the lieutenant governor said, waste is a waste uh, and we can do much better. And, and so there really is an inherent economic opportunity. I think she outlined it really powerfully. Uh, if you have to spend money to get rid of your waste, then you can avoid spending that money and putting it into innovation, into an investment, into a greener future. And I think that's really wonderful. Uh, it's also a great honor to, uh, to host, to co-host the World Circular Economy forum uh, this this week uh, doing this together with Citra and and Canada and uh, I think that uh, it's fantastic to hear that already in California it's no longer a kept secret and I think that joining forces with the largest consumer markets in uh, in the US would be fantastic to team up with all of those other countries in the context of the WCEF to get the message out there and to start really realizing this potential because there is enormous potential reusing materials is the way to the future and I think we have great benefits there to uh, to achieve together. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I'm sure, Lieutenant Governor, you couldn't agree more either. Um, well, you, you, you know the, the, the Dutchies and you know Minister van Veldhoven, you, you've met each other uh, a few times. So m maybe you can elaborate a bit uh, more on what do you think, what areas of collaboration do you see between the Netherlands and California? What are the most important topics that you say, okay, it would be really beneficial to share knowledge on that and that topic? Well, we have developed now, I think, at least four MOUs between California and the Netherlands around sharing best practices and working together. But one of the things that we're watching quite closely is the, uh, the pilot project you're doing in the city of Groningen, if I say that correctly, yes, um, right. where you are using that as this... Um, uh, this opportunity to really invest in um, uh, purchasing power, experimental technology to create the first circular economy in a city. Uh, this is um, the kind of experiment that won't just inform um, your policies in the Netherlands, but for all of us around the world who are really looking for these models to say, we need to see a vision of the future, uh, the, the, the project you're doing in Groningen is, uh, is really something that we are watching very, very closely. Okay, so, so I think that, that's one of the, the main topics to, to keep on discussing. M maybe, um, Minister, for, for you, do you have any questions? Because I know that the Lieutenant Governor also needs to leave us quite, quite early, and uh, we, we're very glad that you would be, were able to join us for a few minutes. So any questions from your side to the Lieutenant Governor? Oh, well, always plenty, but I think we'll have yeah. to stick to, to just a couple of, uh, of questions down here. Uh, of course, what is very much on the, on the, on, on the top of mind in, in all European countries is we're so happy to see that the U.S. is really back at the table, back, let's say, pushing for sustainable development. And I was wondering, really, how can we, how can we move up the topic of uh, resource efficiency of the circular economy in, uh, in the agenda of the U.S.? And, and of course, uh, hopefully, we'll see this uh, figure
figuring prominently also at the, the summit that uh, President Biden is organizing and, and up in the, in the, the negotiations at the COP uh, in, uh, at the end of this year. So I really hope that, that you, you could give, uh, give us some insight on how this is moving uh, in the US. And uh, thank you for the Groningen example. I used to study in Groningen, so of course it's very dear to mm -hmm. my heart. Um, one, one other element which I think is, could be really important that could be really make a difference is to have a mandatory amount of recycled material in every plastic product that we produce. And if we do this, if we start doing this across the globe, it will make such a difference also in developing countries. So I'd be very interested to hear your views on that too. Uh, sure. So I touched on it briefly when we opened, but um, California already has policy the governor signed last year that will go into effect in 2022, that 15% of um, all uh, 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 beverage containers, plastic beverage containers, must be uh, recycled content, 15% by 2022 and 50% by 2030. So we've already set the mandate, which is already sparking innovation on our college campuses and our research institutions and in our national laboratories uh, and in the private sector of what it's going to take to get there. So, so that is already moving. And as I mentioned, we are the largest consumer market in the United States. So as that innovation um, moves forward to meet the, the policy that has already been signed into law, you're going to see then uh, the technology that can be used anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. Um, but the other thing I think I uh, think about here in California is that over the course of the last four and a half years, we really held the flag of the Paris Climate Agreement. And, and whereas um, it, it seemed that perhaps it would be temporary, a new administration would come in as it did, rejoin the Paris Accord, which it did, uh, and then we would hand the flag back. But what we've realized is that as the fifth largest economy in the world, our commitment, our uh, absolutely um, solid commitment in California to combating climate change and our financial um, and educational investment in it is a uh, is now really recognized as uh, as uh, that determination and that consistency uh, has taken on new value. Of course, the Biden-Harris administration's immediate rejoining of the Paris Accord, uh, immediate mandates that uh, climate be considered in every uh, part of the administration, the appointment of Secretary John Kerry uh, to lead up uh, U.S. leadership in the world um, to combat climate change. All of these things are welcome uh, for us in California, and um, we are very hopeful that this uh, trajectory will never change for the United States, but certainly we know in California that we have the ability to continue our leadership in this space, and we will. So thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor, for that. So, so I, I think still a lot of opportunities to continue the collaboration. And of course, the, this week we'll also be discussing with many of your partners in California, but also from, from Phoenix, on the circular urban development, on, on creating really the city of the future. And I, I fully agree with you, you know, all the elements are, are connected. And we really hope that the rejoinment of, of the Paris Agreement really sparks an, uh, even more. So thank you very much for, for, for joining us uh, today. And we really look forward to continue the discussion uh, with you. I don't know. And we, we continue to count on you on carrying that flag forward. Very happy to hear that. And we look forward to continuing our, our joint cooperation. Uh, this is exactly, I think, what we need across the globe. So fantastic to have you here and have you express that message today. Thank you very much for joining, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> Minister Van Veldhoven, I think it's quite a busy week for you. Mm. And um, uh, it's not only this trade mission, of course, you have a very busy agenda, but you also have the World Circle Economy Forum plus climate. You already touched upon it. Um, maybe um, can you tell us a bit more what we can expect from the conference in the upcoming days? Absolutely. Um, I think, why is this conference so important? Um, uh, in the fall, we will have the important COP in Glasgow. And then there, the world will have to show that we can meet up to the expectations that we set to ourselves in signing the Paris Agreement. And we see that if you look only at energy, that we are still quite off the mark. So we really need to look beyond energy and find other solutions to reaching those goals. And circular economy 
is crucial in it's attaining those goals. Yeah. Uh, but we need to increase the awareness, uh, and since nearly all products are produced across international trading lines, uh, produced and sold, uh, we need international cooperation in achieving this. The Netherlands has a goal of becoming 100% circular, but we could never do that alone. So we need the collaboration. And this, uh, this, this, this worldwide conference, I believe that 40 million people have already viewed uh, the announcements. So uh, this worldwide conference is going to bring together all of those countries around the globe that have seen the need to move to a circular economy, that are working on it. Uh, so we want to share the, the inspiration. We want to share the best practices. But we also want to get to concrete commitments at the end of the session and to identify, let's say, new topics for discussion and elaboration, like the link with biodiversity that the Canadian government will take up in their meeting in the fall, uh, like the need to set, uh, for example, a minimum mandatory amount of recycled content uh, yeah. in policies around the world. And what are the differences that we can make when we start doing that? The role of the financial sector in achieving uh, an economic, uh, a circular economy. Um, so all of these topics will be discussed, and I think it will be one of the most important stepping stones to getting to the the COP in uh, in the fall of this year, trying to get more ambition, more concrete commitments for circular economy. That sounds fantastic. Well, well, good luck on, on organizing that because that's, of course, a big challenge. And hopefully also during these days with this mission that we have to the west coast of California, we can also, you know, help help this conversation a bit. And yeah, of well, we've got great examples, of course. There's many Dutch companies that yes. are working really hard on this. So I hope to, uh, yeah. to, to share those examples. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Um, so um, we move over to the US again, uh, if that's OK with you, um, because we're moving over to one of the, well, let's say the, the main organizers of the event. Uh, and that's the Consulate General in uh, San Francisco, Consul General Dirk Janssen. Welcome, and thank you for joining us on this session. Good evening, Ruben. Uh -huh. Good evening, Minister. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And uh, Consul General, so, so during this mission, you're welcoming uh, about 15 participants virtually in San Francisco this week. So what's on the agenda during this fact-finding mission? Well, uh, Ruben, it's going to be a busy week, that's for sure. Um, they're going to take the first steps in um, uh, working with the U.S. on building circular cities. So that's an ambitious aim. And as you know, both the Netherlands uh, and California are front runners on the road to a circular economy. And as you know, both Dutchmen and Californians are, are very creative, very entrepreneurial people. So it just makes a lot of sense to, uh, to do this together. Now, the goal of this week is what we call um, fact finding. Uh, we will be connecting the Dutch companies to potential partners in California and in Arizona to identify possibilities for, for collaboration. And right after this opening, we will start doing so um, in a matchmaking session focused on Los Angeles, uh, in which participants will connect with the local government, with experts in the field, with architects. Uh, one of these architects is our great honorary consul in LA, by the way. And tomorrow we'll be taking a deep dive on, on the local scene in Culver City, uh, which is one of the cities in the LA metropolis. And we'll also have regional sessions focused on, on Phoenix and on San Diego. So we're very much looking forward to working with the companies, to hearing from the companies and to connect them to, uh, to the right partners here, here on the West Coast. So it promises to be a good week, Ruben. Thank you, thank you for, for, for your introduction. And maybe from, from your side, Minister, you have any questions for the Consul General? Always, and it's always a great pleasure to see you again, uh, Dirk. Um, what I was wondering, uh, I've, I've visited California, uh, and uh, of course uh, we got some wonderful examples there of how, uh, how collaboration is possible. What, what are some highlights of uh, our current collaboration on the West Coast between Dutch companies that you'd like to highlight, to share, let's say, what this could uh, grow into, this uh, fact-finding mission? Yes. No, I mean, it's great to see you again, first of all. And after uh, three months uh, ago, we, we launched this public-private partnership. Uh, a, a lot has happened since then. Uh, the companies have been, have been actively preparing for this mission uh, through a series of workshops. Um, and it seems, uh, yeah, some of those workshops, by the way, were with Culver City. I already mentioned Culver City. And, and they, for instance, seem to be very interested in collaborating with the cluster. So that. That certainly looks promising. More in general, I think it's safe to say that uh, there's a lot of interest 
there's a lot of momentum here on the West Coast for circular concepts. Um, there's ever more ambitious regulation at the state level, at the regional level, but there are also many private sector initiatives. And uh, we should not forget that a lot has changed in the US over the last few months. Uh, they rejoined the Paris Agreement, of course, uh, but there's also a strong sense, stronger than before, I think, uh, that the economy needs to become much more sustainable. And despite COVID and despite the travel restrictions, we also see a lot of interest uh, from the Netherlands in working with the US on, uh, on this. And I think many Dutch entrepreneurs really feel that, that their ambitions uh, resonate very well here, here on the West Coast. And from a policy perspective, um, yeah, the, the, the California government is very interested in working uh, with, the, with the Netherlands on circularity. Um, they're very much interested in our approach and in its potential in reaching the climate goals. We heard what the Lieutenant Governor uh, said just now. And I think also the meeting you had uh, just a few weeks ago with uh, Jared Blumenfeld, the Secretary of the Environment uh, of California, was also um, an illustration of that. And that's important because in many ways, uh, no, California is a front runner in the US. And we see that, that often policies that started here are later on taken over by the, by the rest of the country. For instance, in the case of e-mobility, uh, in the case of renovations of, uh, of uh, climate-friendly renovations of older buildings, to name just, uh, just two examples. So this is really a testing ground. And, and that brings a lot of opportunities for Dutch solutions and for Dutch companies. So it sounds like, like a lot of companies start at the right place for, for those that, that are really, you know, starting. Uh, some of them, they're all active in, the, the, in, in your region. So, uh, Consul General, um, maybe also on behalf of the companies, th thank you very much for, for organizing this. And I would like uh, uh, to thank you also for inviting our next uh, guest, because we're moving over to another guest. Thank you, Consul General, for, for joining us. And um, I would like to... Uh, switch over to our next guest, um, which is the mayor of Phoenix. Let's see if we have mayor of Phoenix in the online environment. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, mayor, um, I, I, can, can you hear us? Yes, we beautifully. Thank you for including Phoenix in today's pro program. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor Callego, for joining us. And uh, uh, we know that Phoenix is very active when it comes to circular economy, like you're one of the front runners in the US. Why is this topic so important to you? And why have you picked out the circular economy approach? Uh, sustainability is very important to our city generally. We want to be a, a model of sustainability. Our voters have set a vision for us to be the most sustainable desert city on the planet. And that's something that's personally meaningful for me. I have a, my uh, undergraduate background is an environmental degree. And uh, part of the reason I wanted to be involved is to help with sustainability. Yeah. Our strategic plan says that we'll be a hub of green business and uh, particularly innovative companies that want to take what used to be considered waste and turn them into the materials of the future. So we have uh, created uh, several different areas, including an incubator for tech companies, small businesses that want to focus on the circular economy. We've also set, set ambitious goals for our own extreme, uh, diverting 50% to 25th. We hope will help us leave behind the, the type of city that we want our arch. Um, and it's also wonderful personally for me to be with you all today. I have Dutch heritage and was supposed to be in the Netherlands in 2020. Trip did not happen due to 19. So I'm honored to join the virtual delegate. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. And we hope to, to welcome you very soon. Uh, the, the connection is a bit wobbly, but I think we, we understood well. I, I know, Minister, did, did you understand? Um, maybe you have any questions for, for the mayor? Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, it really touches me the way you speak about how this is also personal for you, because I think when we talk about a transition to a really 
future-proof planets, that is exactly what we need. We need the personal commitment of leaders that want to take this further. Uh, so it's really touching to, to hear you speak about this, and I, I very much recognize uh, that ambition, that drive to, uh, to, to take this agenda further. Um, uh, thanks so much. The, the most sustainable desert city in the world, well, that's quite a challenge, you said for yourself. Um, so what are the, the particular challenges that you come across uh, in creating a circular city? What, what are the things that you, uh, that you come across and that you, that you are, are grappling with or that you are looking most for solutions for? One of the things we really look at is making sure we have partners who can take the materials we recycle and yeah. creating a local economy around that. Um, like many communities, uh, we used to export a lot of recyclable materials to China, and then when the China Sword policy came in and they no longer were interested, yeah. it, it really inspired a lot of innovation in Phoenix, and we started to look for more local solutions. Uh, frankly, part of it was driven by our young people, our kids challenging us to make sure we had a good place for all of these materials that wasn't a landfill, which is very inspiring. One that was particularly challenged for us was we, we did not have a great use for a lot of our plastic materials. I'm, a, I'm afraid um, uh, the connection is uh, not, not so good. So I'm afraid we, we, we lost the mayor, but um, maybe we'll, we'll get her later in the, in the show. Uh, so I, I, I'm sure you had some, some more questions yeah, for the mayor. Just uh, coming to the solution about, uh, yeah. for, for this plastic material, I think a problem we all recognize. Yeah. Uh, it's great to, to, um, to ensure that you get all those plastics, uh, that you separate them from the general waste, you don't incinerate them but then what are you going to do with it? Yeah. So that is why I'm hoping to discuss this, uh, this mandatory amount of recycled plastics in all plastic products next week, uh, or sorry, it's already this week, yeah. at the WCF Plus Climate, because if we start creating a market for these secondary materials, then we also create a reason to separate them and to collect them separately and to reuse them. So uh, I was actually very, very keen on hearing what she had to say about that, but I'm sure we can pick that up at some other time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and maybe, uh, I think we, if we look to the Dutch delegation that we have this week, I'm sure that also some of those companies would have some solutions that would be really worthwhile for, for the mayor to, to see what, what happens on that. So I hope she reviews it. And uh, maybe that's also a nice bridge uh, because we talk about circular economy, about you know creating a circular area development. And unfortunately, we cannot really you know build a circular neighborhood here in the studio here at your ministry. But we can definitely show some of the companies that are working on circular economy that uh, have brought some products that give us an idea on, on how we can well the, the example of of plastics and how you can use plastics to create new materials. So um, I would like to invite some of the companies, that's uh, Hedwig Heinzmann of Actual and Jan Jongert of Super U Studios, to join us on stage. Thank you very much for, for, for joining and also coming to the studio. And uh, Hedwig, maybe to, to, to start with you. I know you're, you're working on some great projects and these are very small elements, but you've brought some very special room dividers. Maybe you can share with us how those were made. Uh, yeah, these room dividers are made on our actual platform for 100% circular and customizable architectural interior, uh, yeah, architectural and interior features, all made by means of digital manufacturing, 3D printed. So these are entirely 3D printed out of recycled waste plastics. Gorgeous. <laughs> so, so, so the plastic that we see in maybe in the desert somewhere can be used to to print these materials. Exactly, and the nice thing is that we also take care of the entire circular process. Yeah. And after use, for instance, such a room divider can directly then turn into a planter, but also a facade or flooring. So we go from smaller furniture to really large architectural features. That sounds fantastic. Uh, and, and Jan, um, what, what, what have you brought for us? Yeah, since uh, we're not able to physically travel anymore, no. uh, we've decided to actually take uh, discarded airplane trolleys uh, that are uh, not used anymore and to transform them into a storage of our uh, waste material samples. This is part of a uh, 12 uh, part storage of um, yeah, all kinds of materials that are waiting to be, as we call it, super used. Super use of materials. I'm quite curious to, to see what they have. Actually, I am. Yes, absolutely. So uh, let me sh show that. What, how are you working? 
Yeah, there is all kind of uh, stuff <coughs> in it. So we, for instance, one thing is um, it's uh, steel coming out of uh, steel industry. Um, every uh, industry has uh, remains like this. It comes in larger sheets and uh, it's disused. And we can actually use this to turn it into fencing or all kind of other uh, construction products. Um, but as well, uh, yeah, with our company, we have uh, discovered that actually after the energy transition, uh, we're also seeing um, the material uh, circular transition now coming, which um, yeah, really leads to, for instance, materials that are used currently for our green energy to transform them into useful urban furniture. So that's what we are doing with SuperUse, is to look at which available waste materials uh, we can transform. What I really like about your concept is that you try to stay as, as, as close to the original product as possible so as to lose a minimum of material or energy in transforming the product. Uh, exactly. that's, that's really amazing. And if you look at those, those, those playgrounds, and uh, it's really fantastic. So, so congratulations on, on really trying to stay high on the, uh, the, the R ladder. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do, not to dump them or recycle them, but actually um, use them as close by as possible um, and transform them and give them a new inspiring function. Absolutely amazing. Thanks. And, and, and maybe, uh, Hedwig, can, can, you, can you elaborate a, a, a bit more on, on the products that you have and the, the circularity of it and how you approach it as as company? Yeah, circularity is really one of our key drivers next to that we're design driven and also that we create mass customizable uh, products. And users can go online on our platform, simply customize products to their taste, after which is then 3D printed by us. And we also take care of the entire recycling um, process, um, guaranteeing that the material really is reused uh, again by means of uh, digital manufacturing. We're only working with uh, plant-based plastics and recycled waste plastics. That sounds fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, and I, and I think it looks fantastic. It is really, really beautiful. And what I also very much like is how you explained that you can turn it into, into any kind of product. Uh, and one question that I would have is, uh, I would say that, let's say, a flooring has different material qualities that you would demand from a room divider. So how yeah. do you, how, what were the major difficulties that you had to solve into making a product that is, that can be used both as tiling or construction yeah. or for a beautiful room divider? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. And we noticed that different products have their own material asks. And that's why we, for every product, really determine the the the, the, the types of plastics that right. are needed. Yeah. Uh, so certain plastics are really suitable for certain functions. Right, right. So you do adapt that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sure that some of the, the, the US-based companies that see this, that, that you know, it really sparks ideas and opens new connections. And, and maybe also for, for using the materials that we see on renewable energies and to give them a second life, I think that's great. Thank you both for joining Hedwig and Jan, and, and I w wish you all good luck with the continuation, of course, also of this virtual fact-finding mission. And I hope you find new great ventures in, in, in the US uh, West Coast. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, so now let's move over to Space and Matter and uh, Metabolic who have worked together on the circular urban areas in Amsterdam. And I think they're both front runners in creating, well, very sustainable and circular neighborhoods like, like the Keuvel and Schoonschip. You, you will definitely know it. Um, so let's move over to Tjeerd and Tamara Streefland. So Tjeerd Hakkau of Space Matter. Tjeerd, are you online? Cheers. Yes, Hi. I am online. Good. Hi. Good to see you. Cheers. So you guys have been taking the lead, and it w was already mentioned on, on the workshops, uh, to well, actually technically connect all those different technologies and solutions of the cluster members. So we've, we've seen two products. Uh, I know you've been developing those circular neighborhoods. So what do you see uh, for possibilities on collaboration uh, with California? And can you maybe tell us a bit on how you guys proceeded with the cluster and what's the outcome so far? Yeah, sure, I can. Uh, well, we have been, uh, been workshopping a little bit with the different uh, cluster partners the past uh, months. And um, the nice thing about our cluster is that it, like all the different domains that you actually need to, 
to create circular uh, areas or circular neighborhoods were present. So we had people from the uh, with expertise about water, about energy, about um, digital, uh, the digital domain, also about the social domain. And, uh, the, the, well, the trick is that you, uh, as a cluster partner, also look at the, the domains right next to you and see how you can, uh, can integrate and how you can close loops together. Um, and, well, we also workshopped with uh, people from the, uh, the LA region um, in, in, in some sessions, and that was very helpful uh, to get a bit uh, of understanding of the local context. And, uh, yeah, you, you cannot do without expertise on local context. So uh, we're really looking forward to, um, well, to intensify this, uh, this collaboration. And uh, tomorrow we have the, the, the Culver City workshop in which we will uh, we'll dive deeper into that. Maybe interesting. Well, we, we made some uh, uh, little presentation, uh, but I uh, have invited my uh, my colleague Alice Ho to uh, to uh, well talk you through it. So I hope she can also be on screen. There she is. Hi, does that work? Hi. Yeah. Welcome. Live in the studio. Thanks for joining us. The floor Thanks, is yours. Thanks, and Thanks, Jed. Great. Okay. Well, I think already quite a nice introduction has been given to the cluster itself, and perhaps I can kind of fill in how we're working together and share a bit of the results um, of what we've done so far. So I think important to say is that we really believe in taking this systems approach, and that's why we're kind of working across the domains that she had mentioned. We have water, waste, energy, materials, food, and community covered by these 14 companies. Um, and what we want to do is kind of share our knowledge on this and also learn from local initiatives. So we've created a series of visuals uh, really to start the conversation about the future of urban development in the West Coast in the USA um, and find ways to work together on that. So I'm going to take you through a few of these visuals um, to show you how a circular neighborhood in the future might look if we're thinking about it on the kind of systems level. So first of all, we have water, um, and we know that water is one of our most precious resources. So by designing an ecosystem of services around water, we can ensure that nothing goes to waste. Here you see that rainwater is captured on rooftops um, and grey water is recycled inside buildings. And if you click on to the next slide, um, I think later in the fact-finding mission, you'll also get more detail on how Metropolda, Hydroloop and DESA can fit into such a system. Um, with the uh, services that they offer in relation to water. Maybe to move on. So in materials, I think what's really essential for us is that building materials are seen as a system of interconnected resources. So we move away from this kind of take, use, dispose model. Um, and choosing a house in that type of environment means configuring a modular system of bio-based materials. And um, here you can see that a building passport like that of Madasta supports um, the kind of reuse at the end of uh, the lifespan of some of these materials. If you go on to food. So what we think is also crucial in the future is that residents um, are more connected to the food that they eat. So by taking a systems approach to food itself, we can actually grow it much more locally and use much less water and land. So if we combine it with water and waste treatment, we actually close the loops of biodegradable waste within the food system itself. Um, and GrowX has been working on uh, developing innovations in this realm. I think if you move on to community. Yeah, what's central, I think, for our projects in the Netherlands so far and what we'd like to do also on the West Coast is really make sure that the community is the client, right? So supported by platform technology, co-creation should become the norm so that needs of local residents can be translated into neighborhoods that improve their own health and reflect their own kind of needs and desires, um, but also respect the health of the planet. So what you see here is this kind of um, uh, community really built from the bottom up. Yeah, that sounds great, Alice. And, and before we move maybe for, to, to a question or to the minister, to you, maybe let's also get uh, Tamara Streefland uh, in, the, in, in the studio because I know she's also working with you guys on, on many of those uh, projects. Tamara, are you also online? 
I am Hi, very Tamara. online. You are Hi. very online. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, uh, Tamara. And um, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, and 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 you've a lot of experience in the Netherlands and in the U.S. Um, and the Netherlands has very in innovative solutions for circularity in the built environment. What do you think, and why why are we leading in this? Well, uh, that's a great question. I think the minister was also already talking about how we've set very bold goals, not only on a national level, but also on a municipal level. We have a lot of very active municipalities that provide space for experimentation and really stimulate uh, the private sector, but also the quadruple helix, not only the private sector, but collaborations between academia, uh, community organizations, the government and the private sector to um, yeah, really innovate and then also go from a process that used to be lin linear in the built environment, um, bringing all the partners to the front and really designing something integral and together. Uh, I think it's, it's something that we really, that we are quite good at. <laughs> yeah. So so I think if we look to, to, to the presentation and also what Tamara is, is um, talking about, it's, uh, the, the, the cluster really, you know, set something out there. So we, we have very circular projects, but you know, what if we put our minds together and make it the, the 2.0 version? Yeah. What do you think of the presentation, uh, Minister? Well, it's it's really amazing. And I think every, everybody understands the inherent logic of what you're trying to do. Uh, because we all have drought, we all have waste, uh, we all need space, we all want uh, to avoid food waste because we all need nourishment. Uh, and so the question is, how do you bring all of this together? Uh, and I think you've set a fantastic vision. My, my question to, to all of you basically is, we, we never start in a greenfield situation, or rarely. Every now and then, of course, you have part of a greenfield situation, but usually it's working in an, in an existing environment. So I think there are also great elements in your presentations with which you can start tomorrow. The building uh, passport, the materials passport, you can start it tomorrow by using it for the products which you add, uh, instead of only doing it when you build a new building. So, so what are your reflections on that? Which, which, which elements of the solutions are actually out there which you can start tomorrow? LEDX, for example, I saw them. Uh, it's also something that you can just start with. Yeah, maybe Alice, m moving back to you or Chert or Tamara, uh, who wants to take up this, uh, this answer? What, what are the, really the solutions we can implement right away? And maybe also for retrofitting of housing, you know, make it very concrete. Well, yeah, I can maybe say something about that. Yep. Obviously, retrofitting of housing is, is very important in the, in the current context, but what I also like to think about is how you can uh, add new things that also are beneficial for what is already there. So to take an example, uh, like the, the GrowX uh, kind of community farms, as you can call them, if you place them there and people can bring their bio waste right to the farm and the farm grows food that the people take, you are already creating a, a loop without demolishing anything just by adding. And I think that is the way we should start to think. So if we add something new, it should not only be self-sufficient, but it should all have a positive impact on uh, the context it sits in. Yeah. Yeah, th thanks, Chert. And Chert, Tamara, Alice, please, please stay with us. And may maybe we'll get back to you because we also understand that we have the mayor of Phoenix, Mayor Calego, back, back in the call. Mayor, w welcome back. Let's see if we can Thank you get so a good much. connection. <laughs> Thank, thank you for, for joining us again, and hopefully you've seen some of the discussion because we continued a bit w without you, sorry for that. But also maybe you've seen some of the solutions that, that would be a great fit also uh, for, for your city. Absolutely, and I guess a message to the Dutch companies that are looking for an American outpost, we would love to have you in Phoenix. As I mentioned, in partnership with our University, Arizona State University, we have an incubator for circular economy companies. Uh, we also participate in several international collaborations through the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and others, and then domestically the U.S. Plastics Act. And we have worked with companies that want to try new solutions. So we recently uh, partnered with Curic, who makes coffee machines, and these little pods that are plastic. Uh, they want to put sustainability at the front of their corporate agenda and are looking at how to do better with their plastic pods. The city of Phoenix is happy to partner with them to test out that technology. So if, if you're a Dutch company and you're looking for an American home that values 
circular economy and sustainability, we would encourage you to look at the city of Phoenix. Yeah, thank you very much. So I hear a kind of an invitation for the Dutch to come over and to, you know, bring over those technologies and see how you can collaborate with, with local companies to, you know, maybe also to scale up these innovations. And I think that that's a very important part of those circular, yeah, well, let's say companies, right, that we Absolutely. scale them up. Scaling up is going to be key in driving the circular economy, and I think that also governments like, like ourselves, uh, national, regional, local governments, have a very important role to play in, in, with their purchasing power. If I look at the Netherlands alone, so next to our policies, uh, it's also with our purchasing power that we can decide to give certain companies uh, an opportunity to expand, to scale up, and to drive down costs. Because, of course, a circular economy uh, is about economy, so we need to yeah. enable those companies to scale up and uh, make them more uh, regular into the economy, and I think we could play a great role there. Yeah, so I think, think th th that will be a great opportunity also for us to work together with, with you, uh, Mayor, and also see if we can bring some companies and if that's, of course, facilitated, like the discussion of today by the public authorities from, from the Netherlands, I think that's great because th those companies, they're, they're eager to, to work with you guys. And uh, so thanks for, 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 for being with us. And I understand we'll meet some of the, the Phoenix companies and we'll hear a lot more on Phoenix later on during this uh, mission on Thursday, where we have a round table to further discuss the potentials for, for collaborations. So thank you very much for, for joining us in this call and, and we're really looking forward to seeing you in a well in a next event, hopefully live or to, to meet you here back in the Netherlands. So let us know if, if you're able you're to travel. You're very welcome. You're very, very, you're welcome. very welcome. We're looking forward to having you here. Yes, yeah. we Th look forward to visiting you and our um, honorary <coughs> consul for the Netherlands works in City Hall with me so we can guarantee a, a good welcome. Excellent. When you come to this. Thank you very much, Mayor Kriega, for, for, for joining us. Um, maybe, Tamara, uh, one more, more question uh, for you, if you're, you're still with us. Um, maybe if your, your short reflection. Uh, you're participating in the, this fact-finding mission. What do you hope to, to gain during the program of this week? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great question. I think our main uh, objective is really finding new uh, collaborations, really trying to uh, bring, bring different partners together and coming up with innovations uh, that will bring everything forward. So really finding those partnerships. That sounds great. Finding those partnerships. I, I know that there are a lot of matches to be made later on even tonight. So thank you very much, Chair, Alice and, uh, and Tamara for, for, for joining. Uh, we're moving on to uh, someone uh, in the United States uh, who could also really uh, identify some of the opportunities for collaboration between the U.S. and the Netherlands. That's James Ehrlich of the Stanford Universities. James, um, thanks a lot for joining us. Can, can you hear us? I do. Very well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining. James, you're a leader in the, in the field when it comes to circular economy. Um, how would you describe the developments in California in the built environments? Well, there is a, an absolute explosion of prefab, circular building material, housing construction companies, and also what are called ADUs, which are these accessory uh, dwelling unit companies. Uh, there is a market for this that is uh, not only uh, burgeoning here in California, but across the U.S. And also, we believe, a fertile ecosystem for uh, pollinating this, this concepts into North Holland, especially into the Kronigan area, which we're also interested in, in looking at. Um, so yeah, we, we see that there is a, a, an absolute opportunity here to take all of these Dutch companies that are on this mission and, and beyond, that there's so much ingenuity, and, and see them baked in to, to these uh, land opportunities where this prefab housing construction is being placed. So, you know, we're, we're very much interested, of course, in new build, but also, as the minister mentioned, in retrofit. So, so uh, it's, a, it's a balance in that. But we see a, a real market here. Great. A, a real market. I, I guess the companies are quite fun to hear that. But, uh, and, of course, it's, um, it, it's also difficult to, to, to collaborate on 
uh, international scale, but really great to see, you know, the, the persons over there that really can help the companies to, to set foot the ground, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I understood that you're also working on green villages. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? And then I think it's also, on the other hand, for us, interesting to know about those prefab housing, because in the Netherlands we have a huge housing uh, issue at the moment, a housing crisis, yep. and we're going to need to build a lot more houses. So I think that, that vice versa, we'd also we can be very interested to other. hear uh, how the prefab housing construction is, is uh, being con being done in the US uh, and of course of how all these companies can work together. Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much. So Regen Villages is a Stanford University spin-off company that I founded in 2016 as a Dutch holding company. Uh, and uh, we're basically realizing the future of living in technology-enabled, bioregenerative, resilient neighborhoods uh, and retrofits where we use machine learning software to design, implement, and operate the integration of these circular systems and prefab housing, passive homes, high-yield organic food production, soil-based and vertical farming solutions, clean water, renewable energy, waste resource management, of course, smart mobility, uh, and establishing these data-driven relationships around nutritional flows so that we can um, address the urgent housing crisis, but also meet the uh, sustainable development goals, which are critical, of course, to meeting green transition funding commitments. So we use the Village OS software to mitigate um, risk and to, to build and optimize these solutions. And, um, and overall, uh, we are part of the EU Smart Rural Village Commission. We're an active member of the European Network for Rural Development. We've been appointed to the UN Climate Change Secretariat Resilience Lab and most recently invited to the new EU Bauhaus Roundtable. So we're very much uh, an EU uh, company, an entity with subsidiaries um, in Sweden and, um, and in US and Canada and most recently in Chile. So what we're really talking about is an ecosystem here uh, that's a supply chain for all of these great Dutch companies to be plugged into. Yeah, that, that's great to hear, James, and and great. And, and I understand you also join us in the following session, so we'll have a lot of opportunities to discuss how we can really collaborate to to learn from each other. I think this is a great project, and it works both ways. Like you said, Minister, you know, there are some great initiatives like these in taking place in California, and we have some great examples in the Netherlands and. Maybe if we put them all together, we can really create a city for the future. I think that's a fantastic point because all of these companies together, they can build a green village uh, and they all form part of the puzzle. So I think that's a fantastic concept for cooperation. I think that's very nice to conclude, well, let's say our opening session uh, on this way. So thank you, Minister, very much for joining and facilitating uh, this session. Thank you for, for um, attending the opening session and looking forward and good luck with the uh, World Circle Economy Forum Climate Plus this week and your busy agenda. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, for and for all of our Dutch viewers and the companies, Please stay with us because um, we'll have the following session, uh, which is, of course, an LA pitch event. So stay with us. Um, we'll close up with a nice compilation video. And that's, I really invite you all to, to stay tuned because that's a compilation where you see all the corporate videos glued together in a few minutes. So you see what all the companies have to offer. And if you would like to join them later on during this, uh, this trade mission, just um, give us a note and thank you very much for, for joining this session. Looking forward to the rest of it and have a great day, have a great evening and have a great morning even in LA and California. Thank you.